single father struggles to raise triplets. Six years later, he finds out they're not his. The years had passed quickly for Jack, every day marked by the whirlwind of parenting three energetic children. The nights he spent sleep-deprived, nursing the babies, were etched into his memory, as were the days when he attended school functions, sitting amongst other parents, and soaking in the pride of watching his children perform. Through it all, Jack's commitment to his triplets never wavered. He wore the badge of a single father with quiet pride, having carved a routine that balanced his demanding job and even more demanding task of raising three children. His living room was adorned with a portrait of Diana, her face captured in a serene moment, eyes glinting with mischief and laughter. That face was a stark contrast to the woman who had suddenly vanished from their lives without an explanation. He often found himself drawn to that portrait, lost in thought, the puzzle of her sudden departure always lurking in the recesses of his mind. One crisp morning, as the autumn leaves painted the streets golden, an unexpected letter arrived. Jack's heart skipped a beat when he recognized Diana's familiar, elegant handwriting. Perhaps he thought this was the long-awaited explanation. Carefully opening the envelope, he pulled out the single sheet of paper. The words written were brief, but their weight was shattering. The children aren't yours. I'm sorry. The world around Jack seemed to blur and spin. Betrayal, pain, and a torrent of questions cascaded over him. How? Why? And most importantly, if they weren't his, then whose were they? Desperate for clarity, he found himself knocking on Marie's door. Marie had been a pillar of support for Jack since Diana's departure. Her job as a private investigator had often provided insights into the complexities of human behavior, and her rational mind was something Jack had always relied on. As Jack recounted the contents of the letter, her brow furrowed in concern. Seeing Jack's anguish, Marie spoke gently. Let's first confirm the truth. Before we jump to any conclusions, a paternity test might provide some clarity. Grateful for her proactive approach, Jack agreed. The following days were a haze of appointments, tests, and an agonizing wait for results. When the day arrived, the results were unambiguous. The triplets were not biologically Jack's. This revelation didn't diminish his love for them, but it intensified the sting of Diana's betrayal and left him grappling with a myriad of emotions. Grief for a life he thought he knew, anger at Diana's deceit, and a profound sense of loss. The bond he shared with his children felt untarnished, but a haunting question lingered. Who was the man behind the curtain of this secret? Marie, observing Jack's turmoil, squeezed his hand, reminding him that biology didn't define fatherhood. Jack nodded, drawing strength from her words, but he couldn't help but wonder about the shadowy figure in the background, the biological father whose existence had suddenly been thrust into the forefront of his life. As the days turned into weeks, Jack, with Marie's unwavering support, embarked on a journey to uncover the truth a journey that would challenge his understanding of love, loyalty, and family. Marie's office was lined with stacks of documents, photos, and scribbled notes, the remnants of countless investigations. Jack, sitting comfortably amidst the chaos, watched as Marie meticulously pieced together the fragments of Diana's past. With every discovery, the puzzle grew clearer and the weight on Jack's heart grew heavier. The most significant discovery was an old photo of Diana with a tall, dark-haired man, his face expressive, hands stained with paint. The back of the photo bore the name, Samuel. Delving further, they unearthed more about him. Samuel was a celebrated artist who had taken the European art scene by storm, particularly notable for the depth of emotion in his work. More importantly, it was found that Samuel had been deeply involved with Diana during a brief period just before she discovered her pregnancy. Jack's heart raced as he put the pieces together. Diana and Samuel's passionate yet short-lived affair coincided with the timeline of the triplet's conception. However, Marie found that just after the affair concluded, Samuel had relocated to Europe, presumably oblivious to the impending storm. The air at home had become palpably tense. Lily, Laura, and Leo, observant as children often are, sensed the disturbance in their father's demeanor. Their curious minds wondered why their mother, a topic usually met with silence or distraction, was suddenly the center of whispered conversations and secret phone calls. 
Plucking up the courage, Jack reached out to Samuel. The conversation was nothing short of intense. Samuel's initial disbelief quickly turned to shock as the implications became clear. Samuel had been in the dark about the triplets, and the revelation hit him like a tidal wave. I never knew. Diana never told me, he murmured, voice tinged with a mix of sadness and confusion. Feeling the weight of the revelation, Samuel felt an innate responsibility towards the children he had unknowingly fathered. A few days later, he found himself on a plane back to the place he'd left years ago, drawn by a pole he couldn't resist. The meeting between Jack and Samuel was emotionally charged. Here were two men, poles apart in their lifestyles, suddenly tied together by the most unexpected of threads. Jack, the dedicated father who raised the children single-handedly, and Samuel, the free-spirited artist whose DNA ran through the children's veins. Their interactions were a delicate dance, each man treading cautiously, acutely aware of the complexities of their roles. Samuel grappled with guilt and a newfound paternal instinct, while Jack battled feelings of resentment and insecurity. However, they both knew that their focus had to be the well-being of Lily, Laura, and Leo. The beginning of summer was marked by an atmosphere thick with tension. Jack's home, usually filled with the carefree laughter of the children, now resonated with the unspoken words and uncertainties between two fathers. Samuel, with his bohemian spirit, brought with him an air of spontaneity that often clashed with Jack's meticulous routines. Samuel, having missed years of the children's lives, was eager to bond, to make up for lost time. He often found himself trying too hard, impromptu art sessions at odd hours, spontaneous trips to the beach, or midnight stargazing adventures. Leo, in particular, was smitten by Samuel's worlds of color, often losing himself in hours of painting, guided by Samuel's patient hand. Jack, on the other hand, felt an unfamiliar sting of jealousy. Every laugh the children shared with Samuel, every secret they whispered, intensified his fear of being sidelined. His home, which once felt like his sanctuary, now seemed invaded by the palpable presence of another. However, the summer had its own plans. Time, with its magical healing touch, slowly dissolved the awkwardness. The children, with their innocent wisdom, became the bridge between the two worlds. They reveled in Samuel's creativity, but they also cherished the stability that Jack provided. Laura and Lily, one evening, set up a makeshift camp in the living room, inviting both Jack and Samuel to share stories. That night, the house echoed with tales of their past, laughter, and a few tears. It was during one of these storytelling sessions that Samuel spoke of Diana's time in Europe. Through his words, Jack glimpsed a side of Diana he never knew. She was a woman caught in the crossfires of passion and responsibility, often torn between the love for her art and the love for her family. Samuel's tales painted a picture of a woman grappling with her identity, sometimes soaring in the euphoria of newfound freedom and at other times drowning in the depths of loneliness. The more Jack heard, the more he realized that Diana's departure wasn't a mere act of betrayal. It was a convoluted web of choices, emotions, and circumstances much beyond his initial comprehension. By summer's end, a transformation was evident. Jack's initial resentment towards Samuel had mellowed into a mutual respect. Their shared moments, be it calming a nightmare-shaken lily or celebrating Laura's first successful bike ride, forged a bond reminiscent of brothers-in-arms, united by a common cause. Samuel, recognizing Jack's irreplaceable role, found a balance between bonding with the children and giving them space. As the leaves began to turn golden, signaling the close of the season, the household was in harmony. Jack, Samuel, and the triplets had found a rhythm, a new kind of normal. The summer had been a journey of self-discovery for both men. It taught them the essence of co-parenting, the importance of understanding, and the boundless definitions of family. While Diana's shadow continued to linger, it no longer cast a gloom. Instead, it served as a reminder of the complex tapestry of life where every thread, no matter how tangled, contributes to the larger beautiful picture. The turning leaves of autumn brought with them winds of change for Jack. The summer, with its trials and tribulations, had been a lesson in introspection. He realized that the heart's capacity to love was vast, unbounded by mere genetics. 
The bonds he had nurtured with the triplets over the years were unshakable, crafted from countless bedtime stories, scraped knees, and shared dreams. Their laughter, their tears, their achievements, and their setbacks. These were the threads that had woven their unbreakable bond. When the possibility of the children visiting Samuel in Europe arose, it was met with a mix of excitement and apprehension. Europe, with its old-world charm, artistic streets, and the promise of countless adventures with Samuel beckoned them. But the idea of leaving behind their home, their friends, and most importantly, Jack, was daunting. The children, wise beyond their years, grappled with this choice. After hours of heart-to-heart conversations and weighing the pros and cons, they made their decision. Europe would be their summer haven, a place to explore their artistic sides and bond further with Samuel, but their home, their anchor, would always be with Jack. Marie, ever the observer, had been a silent witness to the myriad of emotions that played out in Jack's household. She'd seen Jack at his most vulnerable and had also watched with pride as he emerged stronger and wiser. One evening, as they sat on Jack's porch, the golden hues of sunset painting the sky, she broached a topic that had long been on her mind. Life is an ever-evolving journey, Jack, she began softly, and while the past shapes us, it's the choices we make now that define our future. Her gaze held a hint of mischief as she added, perhaps it's time for you to consider dating again. Jack looked at her, taken aback. The idea hadn't crossed his mind. But Marie, with her keen perception, wasn't just talking in generalities. Her feelings, long buried beneath the layers of friendship, surfaced in her eyes. The following months saw the blossoming of new relationships. Jack and Marie's bond deepened, evolving from steadfast friendship to a romantic connection. The children, seeing their father happy, embraced this change wholeheartedly. They adored Marie and welcomed her presence in their lives. The culmination of this journey of rediscovery and healing was the triplet's eighth birthday. The house was alive with joy, laughter, and music. There was Samuel, enthusiastically sketching a portrait of the children, his eyes reflecting the pride of a father. Marie and Jack danced, their movements a testament to their newfound love. The triplets, the heart and soul of the celebration, were a bundle of joy, their faces radiating happiness. As the night drew to a close, the gathering took a moment to reflect. The scene before them was a beautiful mosaic of relationships, some forged by blood, some by choice, but all strengthened by shared experiences. It was a testament to the fact that family is not just about lineage, it's about the memories created, the challenges overcome, and above all, the unconditional love that binds hearts together.